welcome to Christian Financial Perspectives, where you're invited to gain insight, wisdom, and knowledge about how Christians integrate their faith, life, and finances with a biblical worldview. Here's your Christian Financial Advisors host, Bob Barber, and his co-host, Sean Peters. Welcome to another episode of Christian Financial Perspectives. Today we're going to be covering part three of our three-part series on biblically responsible investing. Now, if you like videos on finance and investing related topics, but from a Christian perspective using biblical principles, Mm -hmm. I would encourage you to smash that subscribe button and like this video. Now, I want to do a quick recap. We're going to be covering part three, of course, today, but part one, we covered the definition of biblically responsible investing, the history of it, how it's not ESG, and the many biblically responsible investment choices that we have today now. And in part two, we actually covered the positive screens that we look for in biblically responsible investing, the negative screens, and the technologies that can be used to actually make do these screens with examples. So if you haven't already, we're going to have links in the descriptions, and we should have those uh, videos shown on screen. So definitely encourage you to go watch those. But otherwise, you have been warned. Spoilers ahead If for those of you who haven't watched those two episodes. Bob, what are we covering today? And those are some good episodes. They, they really are. cover they are. a lot, of, especially with those uh, evaluator and inspire reports yeah. that we have. So uh, we'll, we'll wait so, a second. Go ahead. Go watch those. No. All right. Yeah. If you're still here, okay, come on <laughs> you've back. either watched right. them or you didn't listen. And let's let's go on to part three. <laughs> so today we're going to talk about why biblically responsible investing is so important, especially for mm-hmm. a Christian with a biblical worldview. And we're going to go into the scriptural basis and why and what Scripture says and that is so important about bi- being BRI or biblically responsible. And that's responsible. the B in biblically responsible investing. Hey, there you go. The Bible that's right. is exactly right. And how BRI makes a difference even in the marketplace. And that's mm-hmm. where we... We want to have it. We want to make a change, a positive yeah. change. Yeah, we mentioned that a little bit in part two. So, all so right. So, why is BRI so important, Sean? Well, it sheds light in the middle of the darkness and exposes it. You know, it really does, doesn't it? It's it's like because when you come into the marketplace and you're making a difference with how you even invest, and you're saying, mm-hmm. "I'm not going to invest in these companies involved in immoral activities," and I'm actually going to look for companies that are abiding by biblical values. It's just as important as voting for a conservative candidate when it comes to biblically responsible investing. Sean, you remember we did the podcast on called Voting Right, Investing Left. Yep. Okay. Which, again, yeah, it comes down to it, if, if voting is important to you, then investing should also be important to you because that is, that is the way you're voting with your dollars. Mm-hmm. And, and affecting our society, our culture. Yeah, exactly. So, so the next one is, it's very scriptural, which we're about to cover those scriptures. It aligns with a Christian worldview. And finally, biblically responsible investing is pro-life, pro-family, and pro-God. It gives light to darkness. So the scriptural basis for being BRI is, there's several that we've picked, but there's literally hundreds oh, yeah. that we could pick from. Can I, can I get dibs on this first one? You sure can. <laughs> I yeah. love this one. Yeah. Uh, Psalms 24, 1, the earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all who live in it. This scripture I really almost said that one that. earlier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, you, you're getting it memorized because we, we spend a lot of time on that. I believe that is probably the number one scripture when it comes to stewardship yeah. in the Bible. If we do believe that God owns it all, it's his, and we are managers, this is a true scriptural basis for being yeah. biblically responsible. Right. And biblically responsible investing, according to the scripture, it's just one piece of the puzzle. The The idea is that if everything, the world and everything in it and all who live in it belongs to the Lord, mm-hmm. then every area of your life is an act of worship. Your what you do from day to day, your finances, everything. That's right. So, and spiritual decisions for a Christian, or financial decisions, and vice right. versa. Financial exactly. decisions yep. should be spiritual ones. Second Corinthians six seventeen is a well known scripture, and it says, "Come out, and from them, from the world, from the from the secular worldview, come out from them and be separate." Says the Lord, "Touch no unclean thing, and I will receive you." And this is truly what we're trying to do with biblically responsible investing by being separate and not participating in the fruitless deeds of darkness. That's right. Exodus 20, 13 through 14, you shall not murder, you shall not commit 
adultery. And that goes back to a couple of the, the negative screens, you know, and why we say that we shouldn't be supporting companies that are supporting abortion or giving to that. and Or fetal tissue research exactly. using, you know, the parts from babies, you know, exactly. pharmaceutical companies do that. We don't want to invest in those companies. That's right. You know, we steer clear of that. Let's go find the companies that are doing the good pharmaceutical com- companies that are doing good, like yeah. Cures for schizophrenia, things like yeah, that. Yeah, exactly. Okay. And then the other one, you know, you should not commit adultery. Well, mm-hmm. Jesus said, if you even lust, if you lust after a woman in your heart, you've committed adultery. So that comes. I'm under pretty pro- sure under pornography the, would, you know, maybe pornography. The word is not mentioned, but pretty sure that's covered then by that scripture. And so. we showed last week how many companies are involved in a direct or indirect way in the distribution or production of pornography. And I think uh, if you go back and you watch part two, you'll be very surprised at finding which companies mm-hmm. these are. Um, another one is Psalms one thirty nine thirteen. For you created my inmost being; you knit me together in my mother's womb. This is a pro life scripture. Is pro life as they come? Biblically responsible investing is pro life. It's looking for companies that are helping life, not companies that are tearing it apart, it completely, like I say, steers away from companies right. like Planned Parenthood. If a company's giving money to Planned Parenthood, we're not going to be involved in that company. Matthew five thirteen through 16, you are the light of the world. A town built on a hill cannot be hidden. Neither do people light a lamp and put it under a bowl. Instead, they put it on its stand, and it gives light to everyone in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others, that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. And you think about that scripture, right? We are being salt and light mm-hmm. when we're deciding to be biblically responsible with the investments that God owns in the first place. That's right. Okay. First Peter 1, 15 through 16. But just as he who called you is holy, so be holy in all you do. For it is written, be holy because I am holy. Another really strong scripture that backs up being biblically responsible. Yep, and be holy because I am holy also makes sense because we're made in God's image. So Mm -hmm. should we not try to reflect his nature, his character? exactly. And then the, the last scripture in this group is Exodus 20, verse 3, you shall have no other gods before me. And And to me, I I, I always think of that one as the, if if you don't give God your finances as well, Mm -hmm. you're effectively saying that God is Lord of your life, except finance. Finance is Lord of your life in that area. I I worry sometimes, um, you know, I go to a Baptist church, we put them all the way, you know, we got to go down into the water and then you come up, okay? And except last year when we were having a drought, I don't know about that. You know, we had a bad drought here in Texas. I'm just kidding. Okay. But anyway, um, Sometimes I think people, they, they're baptized and they kind of hold the wallet up. They're saying, oh, yeah. well, you get everything, God, but not this. Well, biblically responsible investing is really saying, God, you get it all, including my investments, yeah. because those investments ultimately belong to you, and I want to honor you with them. Yep. God requires his people to worship, honor, and glorify him alone. They are to have no other God, including the God of materialism, net worth, and rate of return. Amen. Amen. So how BRI makes a difference? You know, it makes a difference to me. I've seen this over my 27 years and be involved in BRI, Sean. It makes a difference in my own life and in my soul. And it's taken me into a much deeper relationship with God. And I have seen this, Sean, with clients that have been with us for 20 and 25 years. Their relationship with God, this is another form of worship, like you said. It's saying, okay, God, this belongs to you. And um, I've had many clients that has taken them into a deeper relationship being biblically responsible. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it also makes sense too, Bob, because the, what is it, number one, I think, reason for divorce is like finance related. Yeah. yeah. You know, so if, if you and your spouse are both thinking of how, how do we make sure God is Lord of our finance as well, I'm not saying you won't have problems, but it's, it's getting that right mindset, it, I would think it would grow your relationship with God and maybe reduce the chances that you have issues in your relationship. So, you know, and the, the next one. Another place that makes a difference. To our Father in heaven. Amen. You are managing His funds with honor and glory, with his, with his glory in mind. There's no, there's, no, there's no guilt feelings with being BRI. No. None at no. all. Yeah. And, you know, another thing that where it makes a difference is companies in Wall Street, they're noticing they're noticing BRI. Yeah. Sean, you know, we talked about the history in part one. And um, 
I remember when it started off with just a few thousand dollars. I remember when R. Alley, the founder of the Timothy plant, he was a laughing stock of Wall Street. They're like, this is not going to work. You're crazy. Yeah. Who's going to want to invest like this? And now there's billions and billions and billions yeah. of dollars invested in biblically responsible companies. I mean, how many billion? Like when you think of some of the companies that we, we work with a lot yeah. as well, you've got Timothy Plant. I, I could easily say Inspire. it's over $10 billion, I mean, Eventide's got what? What are they? Like seven or seven billion or so on yep. the, six or seven billion on yep. their own? Yep. I mean... We're at least in double digits at this point of billions. That's right. And Timothy's and right. And that's just Timothy's between like three. five. And so, yeah, yeah, you start you start adding it up. And it is really, it is making a difference because we're also, the difference that it's making is we're holding companies accountable to illicit yeah. behaviors and supporting anti-biblical agendas and behaviors. Yeah. We can actually move their stock price now because... We've we are, BRI is getting big enough that it can move the stock price That's of a right. company. That's okay? right. Okay, and we've had some very positive things happen with some Fortune 500 companies that they were su- starting to support some of these illicit behaviors. Yep. We said we're going to sell your stock if you continue to do that. Mm-hmm. Got a hold of the finance department. Uh, Robert Nestle did a, from Inspire did a great program on this and. Um, I saw him do a speech on this and how he got this major company. I mean, I'm not going to mention the company, right. but it's big. And he got them to stop funding the gay pride parade. Yeah. And because of that, and they they said, you know, we didn't realize that was happening. They pulled back the finance for that. Yeah. Okay. So that that is a good thing. We have a, we have a voice, and if, if enough Christians will come together through the yeah. BRI movement. Yeah, okay. and, and I, I'd like to say one thing on that, Bob. You know, okay. there there is a big difference between giving money to support a gay pride parade and being on board with, you know, with treating people with respect, uh, especially as, as a Christian. So, right. so if someone is part of the LGBT community, do not treat them poorly. Do not no, discriminate against no, them. not at all. Because for one, that is absolutely against what Jesus told us to do. We're to go and make disciples all are, of all, all are men. welcome in the church. And what did Jesus say? They will know you by your love for one another. Yeah. So so there's there's a big difference between loving those people and and wanting to to be available to help them and, and you know, want them to come to know Christ. But that is not the same as, oh, I want to take money or I want to invest in a company that is taking money off the profits and paying to promote that right. very thing. Those are two very different things. But I just want to make sure people don't get that confused as, as you know, they're not the same. That, that's and, all. And, and so, if, you know, the, if the company makes widgets, they need to be in the business of making yeah. widgets, not supporting agendas that violate biblical principles. Yeah. And if, okay? I, if I had a choice, I would say, you know what? If if no companies were were very Christian leaning, but they were they just remained neutral, they just didn't get involved in either, either way. Mm-hmm. That's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Like just let in, let the individuals let let those individuals make the choice of what they want to you know vote for and support just stay out of it <laughs> well i hope this three-part series we has been very in, informative to you on biblically responsible investing if you did not hear part one and part two i really emphasize that you go back and Links you watch those or listen to those and we hope that through this faith-based investing we've touched your heart and if you would like to align your christian faith with how you invest, then we are here to help you do that. And you can find out more by uh, giving us a call at 830-609-6986 or texting that number as well uh, during regular business hours, Central Standard Time. Or you can find out more by going to our website to christianfinancialadvisors.com. And remember, this is the last thing I want to say. Being biblically responsible in your investments is pro-life, pro-family, and pro-God. It, it gives light to darkness. That's right. Thank you for joining us, and hope you join us next time. God bless. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed that video, be sure to like and comment, and subscribe to our channel so you can get future updates. You can also follow us on social media, handle shown on screen. In the meantime, check out one of these other videos.